In the mid right hand position, again as the red Terran, we have FXO Braddock, who's currently up 1 0. Remember, $150 on the line for all of these matches, yeah, yeah. this one included. So Braddock is just one game, one win away from a $150 prize purse. Not bad. Man, if I got $150 every time I won two games out of three on ladder, I'd have $150 today. Because nice. <laughs> I won two out of three ladder games. Very nice. But uh, actually, I, I, I and then I lost like three in a row. Do you know but how many bidder would have? <laughs> Zero. He, no, come on. He would have $600. Really? Did he win that many? Oh, that's know. right. He went on a massive winning yeah, streak the other day. He was balling out today. Yeah. Uh, he was balling out today. And he, he was like winning all these ZVZs and getting mad in typical I know. It was style. awesome. I Check out his stream. <laughs> See, uh, shameless plug for him. Let's go ahead and introduce the mid left hand position. It oh. is the blue Zerg. Liquid Zenio is down 0 1. He chose dual sight, so it's interesting, but I love this for his style. We've seen him continually in his ZVP and his ZVT favor this counter attacking style and I think it's really good. We've seen him also have very good map presence. That's something that you need to have when you are doing counterattacking styles. And uh, Zenio, I think, will be sporting out the handsomeness with that style. Mm. And we'll see if he's able to take it in this game. Braddock he is going to scout as per usual. Now, the big thing on dual site is we have seen a lot of bunker rushes in the past. It is a two-player map with not the longest rush distance in the world, so Terrans do sometimes sneak that in. Zenio does have map choice, so he did select his map. Keep that in mind. And dual site offers a very interesting uh, variety of play, especially with expansion path. Sometimes we see Zerg take top left if you're Zenio's position. Uh, maybe sometimes not the bottom center. Oh, before we do that, we also want to thank our people on at GameSpot for pushing for us. GameSpot, of course, provide lots of content for NASL, and, uh, you know, they're just really cool. So check them out at GameSpot.com slash NASL. Yeah, they're one of the, uh, well, we just partnered with them recently, and they've been fantastic. They're great, man. I like Obviously, them. Um, GameSpot has been around the North American scene for quite a long time, so definitely check them out, as they are definitely a, a gateway to um, I guess esports yeah. and, and furthering. So uh, we do now back to this game. We see two racks and a oh. factory. Now the reactor, of course, is for the Hellions as they can time out accordingly. But the second barracks is very curious. Now he could go for something like Marauder Hellion, which is also pretty strong yeah. on this map. This is a one base all in for sure. Yeah. If you can see, there's no command center. Normally we see a command center being dropped down. These two Marines are just making sure that Xenio doesn't have any indication that this is not a uh, fast expansion. So off of this, I suspect a tech labs and another tech labs actually right here. Um, and then he's just gonna mm. pump out Hellions, Marauders, yeah. and just probably do an SCV pull as well. That's normally <laughs> what we see. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna go that far in one base, you might as well keep going. Correct. Zenio, uh, he doesn't have gas just yet either. He's got one, or he's got two spine crawlers uh, in production just to cover both of his bases against initial Hellions, because that's what he can uh, scout, but I think the big thing is that Xenio uh, has also been denied vision because of these Hellions as well. So very good activity from Braddock, and the longer he can keep this under the wraps, the harder it is for Xenio to be able to react. Look at him, he's droning very comfortably. Eight drones in production, that's a full larva cycle. Yeah, with the recent queen buff, you can do this a lot more effectively just because that five range defense against a lot of different things. Also, you just save up in so much mana, so you're able to uh, transfuse a lot more efficiently. We do have double, nope, Roach Warren and an Evolution Chamber going down right here. That just spells bad news for Braddock, to be honest. Uh, Braddock does not want to be seeing any Tier 1 units or 1.5 units yeah. or the capabilities of making any uh, Tier 1.5, as obviously they're very efficient against Marauder Helling. I mean, just the power of the Queen with the Roach now uh, and additional Spinecrawler DPS is very, very strong. We'll see if uh, Braddock will be able to take advantage of the positioning of these spine crawlers, though, because you can see the Roach Warren is very exposed. Uh, very exposed, yeah. It's on the outside of the corner of the ramp. Braddock's going to reveal his first Marauders, and Xenio's going to know exactly what's up. Five Roaches in production, yep. as Braddock's going to now start pressuring the Roach Warren immediately. Now, he doesn't have Stim, which is going to be a very important moment for Braddock in terms of controlling uh, this, the mobility of his units. His Marauders will be able to keep up with his Hellions in terms of positioning. Taking out this Roach Warren can also be extremely vital. Here comes the SCVs from Braddock. Nope, this came. They doubled back. <laughs> Yep, it will be hard though. There's a ton of roaches. They can keep kiting back to the spine crawlers. 
Still, they don't have enough position, but there it is, the big move in. Mm. Nice transfuse on top of the spine crawl. It Very will nice. keep it up for a little bit, but now these roaches are going to just tank the damage. And look at that. Zenio is going to take a decisive advantage in this early game wow. stage. Just so many roaches. Even though the roach warner was down, Stim is finally going to pop here. But Zenio is going to take it. GG gets called out. And it is a 1-1 one, one series. Fantastic defense here by Zenio. Braddock just narrowly missing his stim timing. But it was still a very good position that he had. He took out the Roach Swarm. I mean, that really cripples his thing to just Zerglings. And then you can really empower the Hellions with the Marauders exactly. uh, keeping everything in check. So Braddock just a few seconds off. But Zenio also did a fantastic read. And you can see he was playing very safe. Let's actually take a closer look at the uh, defining moment of battle of that game. You can see immediately uh, Zenio was setting up for strong positioning. He knows that the biggest thing is he cannot let those Hellions run by whatsoever. But uh, again, the transfusers were very nice. And I was very very impressed with Zenyo's ability to hold. You know, I, I even think if there was a Hellion run by, that would probably be terrible because the SCVs are already uh, pushed out. So it's like you don't want to split your army whatsoever. You want to keep it all together. So uh, honestly, I just feel like Zenyo has a build that defends against this 100% of the time. And normally, Zergs don't have that build. They try to be a little bit greedier, maybe go, you know, mass Zerglings with upgrades. But no, Zenyo is just going to say, I have a build that defends against everything. I'm a little bit less economic in this game, but uh, it's still able to uh, fend off and keep me relevant going into mid-game stage when you are macroing up, as we've seen in game number one. So great play and a uh, great build by Zenio. Fair enough. So let's thank our sponsor, Azo, for providing the monitors for NASL Season 3. Go check them out at azo.com. We'll be back with game number three between Zenio versus Braddock. Will Braddock finally be able to get his first series win, or will Zenio finally move up in the division? Find out after this.